It's hard. Hello, children. Okay. Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. So here hello, we are. Richard, good evening. Hey there. How, how was your electric? <laughs> Well, thank thankfully it is better now, you know, as we are here. No, honestly, I um had to move. I had to go to to a different place so I could um have the class. And uh yeah, it was like a common thing nowadays in our country, you know, trees falling, causing damage on on all the lines, electricity, cable, internet. So, yeah, kind of common um plus as i mentioned the other day here where i live we have that situation with uh with our system that it is too overpowered so yeah it is it is kind of hard sometimes but the good thing is that we are here already and we are ready to continue working it is great to thanks dad thanks dad Hello. <laughs> sorry Hello. thanks dad oh yeah 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 thanks god yeah thanks god we are here already once again and we are ready to continue with uh, with the learning. Now, uh, for tonight, we are going to be covering quite a few things as we are going to go a little bit deeper into um, one of the, or well, at least two of the structures that we use to refer to problems again. You know, the first section, if you guys have, have uh, looked at it, it is mainly about problems. So all we're going to be discussing has to do with describing problems. And it will be basically the same for tonight's class. Um, also, we have the conversation that as, as far as I remember, we didn't have the chance to practice it. So we're going to do that practice today. Um, and uh, as well, the question that I normally ask before we start um, with the classes. Now, I hope you're doing great. I hope it is raining where some of you people live. I was in San Salvador earlier today and I saw that it was it was kind of cloudy and it was raining in some spots. So hopefully you guys are not as hot as I am here in San Miguel. Okay. Um, so for this evening, the question that I'm going to be asking is going to be relatively simple. I would like to know um, what is your favorite drink? I just start with simple questions like that. And sometimes I go um, upscaling, you know, how hard the question is. For tonight, it's something very simple. You can explain the reason why, if you feel like you can do it. You can explain why you like that drink specifically. If not, you can only share with the class what is your favorite drink. But then um, I would like to know that. What is your favorite drink? And I think we're going to start this evening by knowing what is the favorite drink for Javier Martinez. So tell me, Javier, what is your favorite drink? Good evening, coach. Good evening. Um... I have a couple types, different kind of, of drinks. Um, I like coffee, but I like beers too. Okay. I don't know, maybe <laughs> maybe for the for the sour flavor. Um I I like uh, dark beers. The color of the of the liquid, dark. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's different. In the world, we have different kinds of flavors. Yes. A beer is not done; it's not the same. The smell is not the same. No, it always changes. And if you ask me, I know a lot about that. I mean, it's not like I. The thing is that you know, before before I start drinking them, I learned about them because when I was living in in the U.S., I had the opportunity to live with a guy who was a bartender. So he will explain to me right. all the differences. So he will tell right. me, like, for example, if you drink a, a dark beer or those stronger beers, they come from fruits. Like they are normally uh, fruit based. And the ones that are lighter, the ones that are like blonde, as they call them in English, um, those come from the, the regular thing like like weed. Um, so, yeah. It is sometimes better to, to have the dark beers because those are like a little bit more natural. It is still the same yeah. process, but they are a little bit more natural. And the, the main difference is that they have more flavor. 
or yep. more variation in the flavors. So yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot. I don't drink them too much, <laughs> but I do know a lot about yeah. them. To, because... to me, it's, it's not for the alcohol, it's for the flavor. It's for the flavor. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, very much. Sorry, it is a pleasure. It is a pleasure. All right. Now, how about um, Rosa Maria? What is your favorite drink? My favorite drink is uh, orange ju juice. Yes, orange yeah. juice. Yes. Do you like it natural or do you like it uh, the one that is packaged, the one that you can buy from the supermarket? Natural. 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 Okay, yeah. nice. So it is expensive. You have a expensive, expensive taste. Very good. Um, how about the case for Miguel? What is your favorite drink, Miguel? Uh, I, I like it the milkshake, for example, or the smoothie. Okay. I love the smoothies and the milkshake and a different flowers. I, I don't have uh, a, favorite a favorite flower, one. but I, yeah. Okay, as far as it is a cold a blended uh, drink, you will like it. Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. Thanks for sharing. Uh, what's the case then for Ailey? What is your favorite drink, Ailey? Uh, hello, good evening. Good evening. My favorite drink is a strawberry smooth with cookie. Oh, cool. That is a really uh really kind of like a strange mixture but in this at the same time i think it will be very very good so nice thank you for sharing thank you very much how about joaquin what is your case joaquin what is your favorite drink good evening everybody good evening, good evening. my favorite drink is coffee <laughs> and i like to drink coffee in the morning, a middle uh, day of day, and the afternoon. Okay, <laughs> great. You know, I have never thoroughly or fully understood people who like coffee like at all times. Like, I do drink coffee. I drink coffee mostly in the morning. Uh, but I know people, my, my family, in my family, I know a lot of people who whenever you visit them, it can be like 11 in the morning, it can be 2 p.m., whenever you visit, they're going to offer a cup of coffee. And they're not only going to offer it, they're going to have one themselves. So I think to myself sometimes, do they drink a cup of coffee every time somebody visits? Like <laughs> there, are, there are people who, who like coffee that much, who drink coffee like all the time. All so the time. Are, mm -hmm. are you one of those people? What? Are you one of those? Like, do you like drinking coffee like all the day or is it only those three times that you mentioned? Three times of the day. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. also that I, I, I used to see a teacher in the university who had like a huge squeeze. Like for example, this is my, my regular yeah. squeeze. What mm -hmm. I carry here is water when I go to the gym. That is like my most regular thing. Um, sometimes I take it to the university when, when I go to work, but I remember this teacher, he will have two squeezes sometimes yes. and he will completely drink both during an hour and a half of a class. And I was like, that is a lot of coffee because yes. it is a lot of coffee. But yes. yeah, I mean, it is depending yes. on who, on who you talk to, you know, I drink coffee and, and water too, okay. but two or three liter by day for me. Okay, very good. Yeah, that's uh, quite a lot, but still, you know, if it is your favorite drink, go ahead. Yes. Okay, thank you for sharing, Joaquin. Welcome. Okay, now let's hear what is the case for Patricia. What is your favorite drink, Patricia? <clears throat> good evening, everybody. Good evening. Well, my favorite good drink is water mixed with chia and lemon. But if you ask about uh, some drink with liqueur, I love the sangria. Oh. That is a mix with wine and orange juice. Mm -hmm. oh. 
Okay, cool. Hey. Yeah, I remember I was I was uh, around uh, 13 years old when I first tried sangria. It was at a dinner. Uh, my cousin took me to that dinner, and I also think it is really good because if you ask me, my favorite drink when we talk about drinks with like um some kind of liquor, it would be wine. Like I do like to drink wine a lot, and not a lot, but I like it when I have it. Um, but yeah, sangria is also a really good mix, you know, in the in the thing when you're having wine. Yeah. So very good. Thank you for sharing, Patricia. Sure. Yes, tell me. How do you say <clears throat> astemio in, in English? Astemio? Yeah. I do not know what that is. What is a, I, I don't even know what astemio means in Spanish. Astemio in Spanish is when you not drink any type of of oh, with like, alcohol. Oh, that I didn't know. That is a new word for me. So let me go ahead and try to find it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. As you can see, I'm not an astemio. <laughs> 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 okay, astemio, that will be titolatism. Yeah, titolatism. Is the practice of promotion of total personal abstinence from um, psychoactive drug, ethanol, or alcoholic drinks. Okay, so it would be teetotalism. Yes, I think that is the best way we can say that. So teetotalism. Astemio, astemio is astemio. Astemio. Abstemio. Oh yeah, with B. With B. Oh. Astemium. Abstemium. 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 Oh, it's very Abstemium. similar. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Patricia. I think I think because it is like a okay. like a like a very technical word, that's the reason why we we will like refer to it like that because it is oh. something like a little bit technical. Okay. Okay, but well, very good. Are you one of those, <laughs> Miguel? Sorry. Are you one of those? Yeah, I, I am a stemio. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, great. Uh, now let's move on and see what about Walter? What is it your favorite drink, Walter? Yeah, in my case, I think it's the coffee because um, I enjoy to drink coffee in the morning because it gives me a lot of energy and, and to wake up in the morning. Sometimes drink coffee in the dinner, uh, even though... Uh, in the afternoon, when, for example, I get worried, I don't know if I drink a cup of coffee, um, I feel relaxed. Even though if I have a chance uh, to buy uh, expensive coffee, could be coffee cup, could be a Starbucks, mm -hmm. enjoy a lot. I don't know. I feel so good. Okay. Yeah. Great. So yeah. yeah, I can I can see that you like coffee. I can see in, in the way yeah. you, you talk about it that you do like coffee. Yeah, I mean yeah. I have also heard from my stepmother that coffee even get helps her with headaches. Like whenever she has a headache, she drinks yeah, a coffee, yeah, it's, like no it's sugar, good. and yeah. it is good for the headaches. Yeah. In my case, honestly, yeah. guys, I mean, as I mentioned before, I drink coffee in the morning. I will have a cup of coffee. Somebody offers me one. But if I am going to prepare something, I'd rather have tea. Like if you have noticed, I normally have tea when I'm, when <laughs> yeah, I'm, when yeah. I'm here in classes. Yeah, but I'd rather have tea than, than coffee. I don't know why, but it's like my personal preference. Um, tell me, Janet. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I want to, to participate. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, uh, if I don't drink uh, a cup of coffee in uh, the morning, I uh, usually have a headache. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking on that. I was not going to say it. I was thinking. Yeah. It, <laughs> and uh, usually uh, every day uh, from Monday to Friday, Mm -hmm. I I drink two cup of coffee, one of the on the morning and one cup of coffee the before the 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 lunch. Oh, okay, that is pretty interesting. Yeah, because it is hot at that time, but you do mm -hmm. rather to have a cup of coffee. Yeah, I, I think it's it helped me too much to to do digestion. Uh huh, digestion. Yeah. 
Okay, and yeah. get through the day also, because some people say that. In my case, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a hater, okay? Please trust me. I do <laughs> like coffee. I do like coffee. Like, if I can have a Starbucks, as Walter said, I enjoy it. I remember uh, last, yeah. <laughs> time, last time I had to go to San Salvador, I, st I stayed there um, because I had an interview. And I went to Starbucks in Metro Centro. I sent a picture to my yeah. sister and she was like, you're only a show off with your Starbucks and all that because I do like coffee sometimes. But um, I don't know. I, I am not like a huge fan. And um, like, for example, if I have the chance to pick, as I said before, between ch hot chocolate, coffee or, or a tea, I will go for the hot chocolate. That will be like my first option. But yeah like in the middle of the day i don't think i will be like like dying for a cup of coffee i do like coffee when it's cold normally yeah when it's cold or in the morning as i said like almost every day i will have a cup of coffee in the morning but yeah that's i mean that is also cool you know the fact that you guys are um real coffee lovers okay <laughs> how about sandra what is your case sandra Ooh. Wait, I think. Oh, there okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yes, um, my evening. favorite drink is water, but uh, really, I like all drinks, um, with the exception of alcoholic beverages. I don't like <laughs> at all. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's understandable. As per usual, mm -hmm. you know, here we accept accept every every color and every every kind. Okay, now the last <laughs> yeah. two people I'm going to be asking are going to be Amilcar and Jacqueline. So tell me, Amilcar, how about you? What is your favorite um, drink? Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, uh, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I like uh, everything. Uh, less uh, alcohol <laughs> beer and <laughs> uh, never i have uh, drunk uh, any kind of that beverage okay uh, and never i have a smart and really um every day uh, i drink I drink three three cups of coffee and I like um, uh, natural juice, and I like to uh, process the juice. Okay, process yeah. juices or uh, packed or packed juices. Uh, okay. Um, uh, however, uh, I drink uh, a lot of water uh, in my in my job because I work in in a in a hot place. Work in a in a bakery, mm. uh, uh, and the place is very it's very hot. So I had to drink a lot of water. But yeah, uh, I like uh, everything. everything. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 Now I just remember what I was gonna mention before. I I was I just started talking after uh Jan Janet said uh you know her, or after her participation, and I forgot what I was gonna say. I remember now after what Amilka just mentioned. Um, and it is the fact that a lot of people say that whenever they have coffee, they feel like energized, you know, like they have more and more energy, yeah. they, they feel better. And in my case, it's totally the opposite. In the beginning, when I started <laughs> working with Corporativo, I will ask my sister to make me a cup of coffee. Sometimes I will ask them to brew coffee, like from, 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 from um, the, the coffee machine. And none of it worked, like never, all the time. I was always falling asleep by 9.30. When I was hitting 9.30 on the second class, I was falling asleep. Um, and then I started drinking tea and I discovered that teas do actually get me through the classes, but coffee doesn't. In my case, coffee doesn't work <laughs> with me. I don't feel any energy, any difference. Like for example, if I go to a funeral and I have coffee at the funeral, I get yeah. more asleep then I feel revived, you know, like, I don't know why, <laughs> but I work like that. In my case, it doesn't help me. I know, I know that many people say that, no, you have a cup of coffee and then you can get through, through a lot. For example, just, just now I was telling my, my, my girlfriend that I was a little bit tired 
and I felt like getting, you know, like an energy, energy drink. And, but I wasn't sure, like I did not get it at the end. I'd rather have a tea, um, but I was thinking on it. I was thinking on getting an energy drink. And she told me like, wouldn't you rather to have a cup of coffee? And then I had to remind her that coffee makes me feel more tired. I don't know why, but <laughs> and as yeah. I said, as I, as this I said, this is so different. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So so I'm, I'm, I'm not a hater. Okay, There's, I do yeah, like coffee. Yes, the the coffee different of the the mayor mm. of the people. Yeah, yes. probably. But it's the first time I, I listen to this. Yeah. Picture, when I when I had an opportunity or chance to buy a, a a coffee in Starbucks, a coffee cup is not as frequently, but uh, when I drink in this in this place, I don't know. I can sleep at night. Really? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just, just, just. We're yeah, gonna finish yeah. with this. Uh, then we're gonna yeah, give so Jacqueline strong. her chance. But I'm going to tell you guys yeah. this short story. The coffee I mentioned before that I had at the Starbucks that day when I had my interview mm -hmm. there in San Salvador. So, um, yeah. I mean, I was alone, so I, I I was in an interview, so I was alone. I don't live in San Salvador. I don't have any friends there, and uh, I decided to go to the movies. You know, I, I bought a ticket for this movie. Um, um, I don't know the name for it in English, but Trembala. That's like a sort of like a new movie, and my friends wanted to see it, so I was like, I have the chance. Why wouldn't I? You know, so I went to the movies. I only made it through the first forty-five minutes. After 45 minutes in the movie, I was starting to fall asleep. And I called my girlfriend and I told her, what should I do? And she was like, if you're falling asleep, it will be very weird if you fall asleep inside the movies. So you better go to your hotel. <laughs> and that's what I did. I went to the hotel. I had um, a pineapple juice and then I went for dinner. So the pineapple juice gave me, gave me more energy than the coffee. I don't know why, but you know that's how I work. Kind of weird. Uh, okay, but yeah, you know, it's very, very weird. I don't, I don't work with coffee. In the morning. Uh -huh. But it, Patricia dando consejo, aquí hay niños, Patricia se va a agarrar. <laughs> okay, Jacqueline, your participation, tell me, what is your favorite drink? Good evening. Good evening. Teacher. In my case, teacher, I have two favorite drinks. Uh, are the Coke. And the lemonade. I love the coke teacher. I Be love. careful with that, please. Be careful with that. Coke. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to say coke. 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 Okay, yeah, there teacher. Yes, there yeah. you go. Coke. <laughs> yes. Okay, so coke and, sorry, what was the other one? Uh, lemonade teacher. Oh, yeah, lemonade. I like, I love, I don't like, I love lemonade. Yeah. I, I am a, really a banger for, for lemonades. Yeah, so I, I understand you on that one because I'm always looking for either a pineapple juice or a lemonade. Those are my two um, favorites, if we can call them that. But if you ask me for my favorite drink, like in, in general, what is something that I will always pick? I think it will be yogurt, you know, or or... Yeah. Um, this is strawberry milk. I don't know if you guys uh, like the strawberry milk. Si, la, la leche con, con, con fresa, la que venden, la que es como la chocolatina. So that's my favorite drink. I'm not a kid, <laughs> but I do like that, you know. And if you, I mean, if you don't trust me, honestly, guys, I do have like a lot of, I don't know if you know this brand. <laughs> cool. No es Coffee Cup. No me recuerdo cómo se llama, pero no sé si ustedes han visto los Starbucks que venden en, en botes de vidrio. Pero hay otra, yeah, otra yeah, marca, yeah. que es la común de las gasolineras. No me acuerdo cómo se llama. Yeah. Pero ese café, o sea, si yo no encuentro chocolatina, yo compro, o sea, la de la de fresa, ¿verdad? Yo compro ese café, o sea, a cada rato, yeah, y pero esa cosa is. nunca me funciona. Yo me lo tomo como si tomase agua, y no es como que yo siento <laughs> nada después, ni nada. Pero sí me da cosa cuando la gente dice, no, que el café te da energía, que no sé qué, no sé cuánto. Yo, <laughs> no, not for me. Yeah, so it seems like me and coffee, we are not the best friends. But, you know, at the same time, it is great to see that for you, for many of you, it is your favorite drink. Okay, so now that we know that, we're going to start working into our, well, main situation here. So this, we didn't practice this conversation, right? 
Yeah. We didn't we didn't get to practice or did we? Did we practice or no? Yeah. No. 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 Just, just a little bit. Oh, okay, entonces hoy al final de la clase lo vamos a hacer porque yo recordaba que no, solo la leímos y vimos un par de cosas, pero no necesariamente práctica. Okay, so here, when we talk about describing problems, we can use um, different things. For example, here you see that uh, in the conversation, um, wait, let me see here. Uh, this the person oven says, the oven burning keeps percent. burning. Yeah, keeps burning everything, everything I try to cook. So here, when you use the verb keep, after keep, we're always going to be using um, a gerund. If we want to give yeah. like a strong meaning on the, on the situation that we're explaining, it is way better if we use it like this. Because if, for example, we say keep to burn, that is not properly yeah. done grammarly or i mean at least taken from the grammar viewpoint that is not going to be acceptable the only way you have is by using a gerund now gerunds if you guys don't know already i hope you do are basically the participle form the present participle form of every verb like take any verb you know and use uh do the change on ing now when we do the change on ing it can work in many ways for example here the verb oh. we have here is the verb tell. Now with tell, the only thing we do is that we add the ing after it. But there are some mm -hmm. verbs that are going to be a little bit different. For example, um, I think we don't have any here. Wait, no, the verb burn. Yeah, there are no examples here. But there are some, there are some verbs. And right now, the only one I can think of is going to be um start no starting it's basically the same wait i was thinking of it before estaba pensando en dos tenía dos ejemplos antes de empezar la clase pero se me fueron hablando del café se me fueron ahorita bueno pero hay los ejemplos son muy pocos aquellos que van a tener cambios se los quiero comentar esto porque o sea la mayoría de veces que utilizamos verbos sí por, por ejemplo si utilizamos verbos en tercera persona algunos de ellos que yeah. terminan con una Y, por ejemplo, estos verbos van a tener que cambiar a convertir esa Y en una Y latina okay. y luego agregamos la E y la S para que esto funcione, ¿verdad? De forma, de forma correcta. Eh, específicamente podría ser el caso del verbo study. Sí, o sea, si ustedes utilizan study Studies, con una yeah. tercera persona, vamos a tener que hacerlo así, studies. But when we talk uh, or when we use it with an ING form, there is no need to do that. You have to say it like this, studying. Now, there is, you're not going to be replacing the Y. You're not going to be changing the Y in any way, shape, or form. But it is only going to be adding the ING. And that is why I consider you know, gerunds are one of the most useful and probably um, easiest things to remember and to use in English. Now, if we talk about when to use a gerund, that is going to be a totally different topic that is completely different because there are many uses for gerunds. A gerund can be a verb, a gerund can be an object, a gerund can be even okay. uh, used as an adjective. So gerunds are many things. When I say that a gerund can be an object or a noun, I refer to things like dancing, for example. If you say dancing, dancing, yeah, uh, let's say dancing competition, for example, Dancing here is not necessarily seen as a verb. It is a mm -hmm. noun. Sí, es una competencia de baile. Entonces, esto no es un verbo, ¿verdad? No es un adjetivo, sino que funciona como un nombre. Entonces, dancing or... Uh, here's an example. Aquí estaba uno. Este era uno de los que tenía en mente. Dancing. Eh, el verbo dance. Ese es uno de los únicos que cambia, porque dance se escribe de esa forma. Entonces, pero dancing sería justo así, ¿verdad? Eliminamos la E y colocamos el ING. Pero entonces, eh, los gerundios tienen esa, esa posibilidad de funcionar en diferentes eh, posiciones de la oración. Son muy, muy eh, polifacéticos, digamos. Pero lo principal de estos, o el uso principal, es para poder facilitar, ¿verdad? La utilización de dos verbos justo al lado. Sí, cuando tenemos dos verbos, o por ejemplo, cosas como esta, eh, que el verbo keep, 
eh, se utiliza, ¿verdad? Para poder darle como el sentido principal a la oración, yo voy a necesitar colocar un verbo justo después, porque keep no va a ser necesariamente el verbo principal. Lo mismo sucede cuando utilizamos el verbo like, sí. I, I can say, if, if you say, for example, that you like, si les gusta escuchar música, you say, I like listening to music, ¿sí? No dicen, I like to listen to music. Se puede, yes, you can do it like that, but it's not the best way. The best way is going to be by saying, like listening to. So there you have two verbs joined together. Instead of using um, the particle to in the middle, you rather use a gerund and that is like the main use for gerunds whenever sure. you have two different verbs uh next to one another you can use gerunds and it's going to be way way better tell me joaquin yes um i have a question for that um mm -hmm. is it is the uh, similar rule rules um when we use in a present continuous using has have been uh not necessarily for gerunds the only difference or i mean the only uh thing you have to respect is the fact that you have to have two different verbs necessary is uh, using two verbs uh two verbs next, next, yes two verbs together whenever you have two verbs together and okay. it is on, in occasions when you have to to talk about Um, recurring situations, like this example, keep, when you have to talk about taste or preference, when you use um, the verb uh, um, like, and when you talk about necessities, and it is when you use the verb need. Yes, I need, uh, in that case, it is, uh, depending on how or the situation that you're going to use it, you can use it with gerund or you can use it with infinitive. Sí, estos son bastante similares a los verbos infinitivos o a la, a, la, a la forma, ¿verdad?, de los infinitivos en el significado que tienen en español. Una mm -hmm. cosa que sí es importante que tengamos clara es que los gerundios no existen en español. Esta es una característica mm -hmm. específica de los, de los, de los verbos okay. en inglés, nada más. En español no lo vamos a utilizar porque, por ejemplo, eh, si yo fuese a traducir una oración de forma literal, como está escrita acá, ¿verdad?, en español, sería... Eh, mi, mi maestro uh -huh. continúa, eh, se bueno, la, se la pasa diciendo, en este caso sí funciona, sí, se la pasa diciendo o diciéndome que aprenda los verbos, sí. En este caso, pueda que funcione, pero hay algunos, como por ejemplo aquí, eh, digamos, esta silla necesita arreglar. arreglando, sí. O sea, uh -huh. no, no va a entenderse como necesita arreglo, sino necesita arreglando. Ok, entonces habrá algunos en los que funciona muy bien el gerundio en español, la traducción, pero hay muchos casos en los que el gerundio en español no va a funcionar porque la, el significado, ¿verdad?, que, que tiene no. ¿sí? no es necesariamente utilizado en español. Por ejemplo, acá tenemos, it keeps burning, este sí funciona, ¿sí? Continúa quemando. Ahora, claro que esta es una oración incompleta, ¿verdad?, keeps burning. Pero luego, aquí, por ejemplo, estaba lo que les decía del need, ¿verdad? Eh, si ustedes sí. quieren decir, si ustedes tienen una necesidad de llevar a cabo una acción específica, será mejor utilizar el, um, el infinitivo. El como por ejemplo, no, el infinitivo. Como sí. por ejemplo, si ustedes necesitan vender algo, o sea, si ustedes deben hacer algo más, algo como aparte de aquí, digamos. Entonces, yo digo, I need to sell Sí, no necesariamente voy a decir I need selling, ok, mm. I need to sell, si ustedes necesitan comprar, o sea, es algo que ustedes van a hacer en otro lugar, ¿verdad? Ustedes dicen I need to buy, o I need to go buy this, this and that, entonces, uh, en ese caso suena, sale mejor si utilizamos el, el infinitivo, pero si ustedes están hablando de algo que tienen justo ahí enfrente, o sea, algo que está en su entorno, será mejor utilizar eh, el, el, el gerundio, ¿sí? Como en este caso, the oven needs fixing, ¿sí? El horno necesita ser arreglado, necesita ser reparado, reparado perdón, needs adjusting, adjusting. The oven needs adjusting, ¿sí? Necesita ser ajustado, ¿verdad? Entonces, es algo que podemos hacer en este momento, justo acá donde estamos, así que es una necesidad que debemos completar 
ahora y por eso mismo utilizamos el gerundio. Pero si es una necesidad que yo voy a necesitar ir a otro lado o moverme de donde yo estoy para poder llevarla a cabo, para poder cumplirla, para poder eh, solventarla, es mejor que utilicemos la forma infinitiva para explicar ese tipo de cosas. Bueno, pero vamos desde el principio entonces. So when we have keep and a gerund or anything, basically, with a gerund, what we're going to do is that we're only going to, um, to try and use the first verb as the base for, for the, whole, um, the whole situation. What I mean here is that, for example, if uh, I'm talking to, I mean, I'm talking about someone else, the first verb, keep, in this specific case, is the one that is going to receive the third person um, change. We're not going to yeah. have to do any change to the main verb. And here also, the situation is telling. So the main thing, the main action is this one. Therefore, this is going to be the main verb. Keep is only going to be like a means to getting to that main situation. So keep is only the recurring uh, thing or the fact that we're trying to explain that the teacher does it over and over and over. And that is why we're using keep. The same as if I, I, will, I were to say that somebody else likes to go to the beach. I will say um, Teresa likes to go to the beach. Therefore, what I'm explaining is that it is Teresa, the one who likes to do that activity. Now, um, I can also say likes going to the beach. Mm -hmm. It is properly uh, used. However, the, 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 the thing that I'm trying to say here is that that verb, like, is the only one that is going to receive that change to the third person. So uh, that is something we have to consider that this verb independently, uh, that it is keep, is like, or uh, in the case of need, the same, we are going to do the change only here. When we get to the main verb, it is only going to be in the gerund form. So my teacher keeps telling me to learn my verbs. Now, Here's another thing. Este es uno, uno de los detalles que sí a mí me gusta bastante de esta oración y que es algo que quizá con los adultos casi no se usa. Eso sí da, que, que quede bastante claro, ¿verdad? Que es muy común que se utilice este tipo de frase con los niños. No sé si en español también, porque no tengo hijos, pero este, ni sobrinos que vivan cerca. Pero en inglés es algo muy, muy común. Cuando un niño está en un proceso de aprendizaje, digamos que está aprendiéndose el vocabulario, está aprendiéndose eh, los números o cualquier cosa que esté tratando de aprender, principalmente cosas ¿verdad? que tengan que ver con el, el estudio de, de pues, las letras o los números, se utiliza esta forma. O sea, le decimos my o your, cuando nos referimos al niño, ¿verdad? Learn your verbs. Sí, en español casi siempre solo decimos, ¿verdad? Según lo que yo recuerdo, es solo aprender de los números. Así, como de forma vaga, ¿verdad? Los números. En inglés se le da como esa importancia a este tipo de cosas y se le dice your verbs o your numbers porque es algo que le va a pertenecer, se supone. O sea, media vez esta persona se lo aprenda, ya le va a pertenecer, ¿verdad? Entonces yo voy a decir my verbs. Son mis verbos porque yo me los puedo ya. O sea, yo ya los conozco. Entonces por eso se utiliza, ¿verdad? Esta... Este cambio, o esto es más como una cuestión cultural, una cuestión de costumbre, eh, que se utiliza en inglés. Entonces, por si en algún momento ustedes lo ven y se les hace extraño, en muchos lados se ve. O sea, muchos niños en muchas ocasiones dicen, ¿verdad? I'm learning my verbs, I'm learning my, my numbers, my alphabet. Entonces, no vayan a, a pensar que es que el niño se lo ha inventado, sino que es algo que los adultos, ¿verdad? Hacen muy a menudo como para poder establecer esa responsabilidad eh, del menor con el aprendizaje de aquella cosa específica. Entonces, eso es algo bien, bien común. Um, por si en algún momento también ustedes lo quieren ocupar, o sea, pueden decirlo de esa forma, ¿verdad? Um, so, yeah. So, my teacher keeps telling me to learn my verbs. Sí, mi maestro me sigue diciendo, o sigue diciéndome que me aprenda los verbos. O sea, en español no lo vamos a traducir como mis verbos, ¿verdad? Porque en español suena raro, el español no, es, no tiene como la costumbre, otra vez más, es una cuestión cultural del inglés, no necesariamente del español. Así que en español ustedes lo pueden traducir mejor como los verbos. Y también se los digo, si en algún caso lo tienen que traducir para que no se vea o suene raro. O sea, si ustedes dicen mis verbos, 
es como, o sea, no son ustedes su propia RAE, por decir algo, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, that is one thing about English that is kind of weird there in the middle. Okay, then, uh, when we use need, as I mentioned before, we can use both. We can use either gerund or passive infinitive. Now, uh, we use need when something has gone wrong. Now, this, uh, the key, as I said earlier, is when something is repetitive, something that happens over and over. When something goes wrong, then we have to use um, need. Yeah, this chair needs fixing. So the chair basically broke or it has something wrong in it. Therefore, we can say it like this, it needs fixing. Or we say needs to be fixed. The reason why we say passive infinitive is, the, is because we don't only say need, needs to fix, but we say needs to be fixed. And uh, do you know what is passive voice or uh, when do we use the passive voice? ¿Recuerdan ustedes, alguno de ustedes, cuando se utiliza la voz pasiva? When I, when I give more attention to the object, I think, remember that? Yes. Basically, also in this specific uh, moment, what we can say is when um, someone else has to do it. Sí, o sea, alguien más, ¿verdad? Como por ejemplo, cuando la acción no depende de las personas que están, que están subject, desarrollando, ajá, del subject, sino que depende no. quizá de alguien más o de la parte más importante de esta oración es el objeto. Entonces, aquí, por lo que decimos, needs to be fixed, no es porque necesariamente yo la puedo arreglar, ¿sí? Sino que yo estoy simplemente apuntando, ¿verdad? Miren, ese detalle debe ser arreglado. O sea, pero no estoy uh -huh. mencionando necesariamente quién lo va a arreglar, sino que estoy tratando simplemente de mencionar de forma específica que eso debe ser arreglado. Es el objeto, uh -huh. ¿verdad? Que necesita eh, ser arreglado. Entonces, por eso utilizamos el pasivo, ¿sí? El, pas el, el pasivo y también infinitivo a la misma vez. So, this chair needs to be fixed. Ahora, eh, we're going to see this as more examples. For example, with keep and gerund. Everything keeps burning. Of course, burning. this is only an example. We can make it way um, longer here. If we say, for example, everything keeps burning when I use my oven. Yeah. When I, oh, sorry. When I use my oven. And that will be totally okay. That was is only like a longer example. It doesn't mean that you only have to say everything um, keeps burning, of course. However, um, it is the example that we are going to be using keep to refer to things that happen one, two, three more times than we wish they will happen. Uh, also, with the alarm, the alarm keeps going off. Once again, this is a phrasal verb going off. I don't know if you guys know what is the meaning of this phrasal verb. Any of you? ¿Alguien conoce? Eh, no. Eh, ¿Encendido? Encendido. Sí. When something goes off, cuando en, en inglés yo sé que la, la palabra apagado. off es apagada. Yeah. Yeah. Off, off es apagado, pero yeah. Yeah. go off es cuando algo se activa. Es complicado, oh. pero es la forma en la que funciona, ¿verdad? Off it's like when like the, the alarm sounds in the At, morning. Activada, entonces. Yes. Go off, yeah. yes. es que se, activada. Es, es, continúa activando, exactamente. Aquí sería ah, la alarma okay. continúa activándose. O sea, cada rato, ¿verdad? La alarma se activa. Entonces, go off. Eh, esto normalmente se utiliza con, con cosas automáticas. O sea, mayormente el, el, el phrasal verb go off se utilizará con cosas automáticas. También se puede utilizar en cosas que tengan que ver con eh, situaciones militares. Por ejemplo, en el caso de las bombas, casi siempre se dice, ¿verdad? That bomb just went off. Eh, y por eso mismo, o sea, lo menciono lo de las bombas, perdón, porque en el día a día se puede utilizar el go off si ustedes en su trabajo ven que está a punto de suceder un problema, ¿verdad? Su supervisor se dio cuenta que uno de sus compañeros no estaba haciendo algo como se lo había pedido desde hace un mes y su supervisor les pregunta, ¿dónde está Milcar? Sí, entonces y a la Milcar ya sabían que Milcar estaba comiéndose el pan con café y le estaban diciendo a Milcar, usted no tiene que pasar comiendo pan. Entonces, y a Milcar seguía comiendo pan. 
Así que el jefe lo está buscando, ¿verdad? Así que ustedes pueden decir, something is about to go off. ¿Sí? Algo está a punto de activarse, algo está a punto de, de pasar. Entonces, go off se puede utilizar, ¿verdad? También en ese, en ese contexto. ¿Sí? O si, por ejemplo, ya están eh, su jefe y amiga en la oficina, ¿verdad? Ya conversando, sí. también pueden utilizarlo así en esta forma. Pero en eso sería diferente. Sería no gerundio, sino en, en presente continuo, ¿sí? O sea, ustedes pueden decir, something is going off. Sí, algo está pasando, algo está, está activándose ahí. Entonces, eh, go off. Going on es lo mismo, pero el go on se utilizará más que todo en cuestiones como si ustedes estaban explicando algo. Y yo les digo, ¿verdad? Go on, o sea, se utiliza en ese contexto, continúa. Y también se puede decir, o sea, eh, que si algo está pasando, puedo preguntar. What's bueno, going on? Or something is going on. Sí, pero en ese caso, con el going on, es más que todo la sospecha, ¿verdad? Como, ¿qué está pasando? Mm -hmm. Sí, something is going on. O sea, como, algo está pasando. Mm -hmm. Ustedes están a punto de cumplir años y ven su, que sus compañeros del trabajo están ahí como, como que no les quieren hablar, como que estaban al otro día hablando de comprar eh, un pastel. pastel y ajá. Entonces, ustedes pueden decir, I think something is going on. Pero ese será diferente, ¿verdad? El go off es cuando ya estamos casi seguros de que algo está pasando. O sea, está estallando ya la situación. Ok, so yeah. And, that, and keep as well, as I mentioned earlier, is when this happens in a repetitive way. Over and over. Then, need. Uh, the oven needs adjusting. We previously read this example. The oven needs adjusting and the alarm needs fixing. So... Here, uh, we are only saying that, for example, in the case of the oven, it was burning everything, so we have to adjust it. You know, someone, not me, not you, but someone who knows about these things uh, has to adjust the oven. Or if we want to try it, at least uh, we have to pinpoint that this situation is happening and we have to solve it. So it is a necessity that we have here and now. And also, the alarm needs fixing. Basically the same thing, you know, probably you and me, we cannot fix the alarm, but if we are going to try it, we have to do it here and now because it needs to be fixed like as soon as possible. Then, then we have more examples with passive infinitive. It needs to be adjusted or it needs to be fixed. Now, if you notice here, one of the differences also is that when you are um, using the passive infinitive, It is basically the same as I mentioned the other day when you use the noun when you're describing problems. Remember that with mm -hmm. the noun, you don't mention the specific thing, the item in the sentence. So here is basically the same. In the conversation, yes. you have previously mentioned that your alarm is broken, your alarm goes off all the time. Then somebody else just says it needs to be fixed. Yeah, it needs to be fixed. Therefore, Uh, when you use the infinitive, there is another of the situations that you can um, you can also refer to as when you only add the comment. Sí, o sea, esto puede servir como solo para agregar el comentario, ¿verdad? O sea, y a la misma vez desligarse ustedes de la situación, porque ese es otro de los detalles. Cuando utilizamos este, este, um, este pasivo, ustedes de cierta forma se están desligando de la situación. Como, o sea, está bien, tu alarma se está dañando, está mala, necesita ser arreglada. Pero no voy a decir, uh, we have to fix it, or, um, yeah, the alarm needs to be fixed, or needs fixing, We're, let's do it now. Sino que solo, it needs to be fixed. Oh. Sí, ese objeto necesita ser arreglado, pero, who's going to fix it? I don't know. ¿Alguna duda, perdón? Yes, I have one. Okay. Okay. If going off is activándose, how do you say desactivándose? <risa> Desactivar eh, mm. se, se, sería deactivate. Hay algunas, hágase constar. Esa es una de las cosas complejas con los phrasal verbs. Porque muchas veces, o sea, a veces pensamos, ¿verdad? Que, o sea, ¿por qué existen? Sí. Los phrasal verbs, una vez más, son cosas que nacen como de la cultura o de la costumbre. Por ejemplo... A alguien quizás se le hizo difícil decir activate, sí, o something is, is, is happening nada más, y decidió que esto era una mejor forma de decirlo. Entonces, no todos los phrasal verbs 
que nosotros conocemos, o sea, las palabras, ¿verdad? Tienen casi siempre sin, antónimos y, 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 y sinónimos y todo, pero principalmente en este caso se refiere al antónimo de activar. Eh, necesariamente, no, oh, perdón, no es necesariamente algo que deba existir un phrasal verb para representar eso. Entonces, en este caso específico, es uno de, esos, de, esos, de esas situaciones en las cuales existe la palabra o el phrasal verb para poder decir, ¿verdad?, que algo se activó, pero no necesariamente va a existir un phrasal verb para decir que se desactivó. En el caso de decir que se desactivó, tendríamos que ir a la palabra como tal. O sea, porque no es la única forma, ¿verdad? Yo puedo decir, the alarm kicks activating, ¿sí? Y sería lo mismo, ¿verdad?, que decir el go off o going off. Pero para el desactivarla, ¿sí? lo que podríamos decir en algún caso sería breaking down. Sí, breaking down. O si no, también podríamos decir turning off. Sí, turning turn off. off. Ajá, no, pero no. El turn, turn off es mucho más literal. O sea, y el problema es que allí ya se cae, ¿verdad? La idea de que sea un phrasal verb. O sea, porque la, 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 la complicación con los phrasal verbs es que no son literales. Sí, o sea, yes. porque, por ejemplo, aquí estamos diciendo, ¿verdad? Va fuera. Sí, o sea, going off. <risa> Sí, va afuera y significa que ah, activate. Así que es, es como diferente. En cambio, turn off, en ese caso sí, ¿verdad? Porque turn es cambiar y off es apagado o, o, o fuera también. Entonces, pero eh, sí tiene sentido más literal el decir no, turn no, off no. que decir, eh, por ejemplo, el, el going off. Pero eso es una no, cosa, no. o sea, un tanto compleja a veces con los phrasal verbs porque como les menciono, no todos tienen una contraparte. O sea, muchos quizás sí, pero no todos eh, tienen una contraparte que sea también en phrasal verb. Okay. Uh -huh. Y la otra cosa que también es eh, importante aclararla, para todos los phrasal verbs existe otra palabra también. Um, que sea complicada, sí puede que sea alguna palabra complicada, pero para todos existe otra palabra. Hay algunos que son mucho más comunes que la palabra que que los esconde o que los representa, pero esos, o sea, por ejemplo, el hecho de decir eh, get up, sí, ustedes pueden decir en lugar de get up, raise. Si ustedes se van, por ejemplo, a, a un libro, sí, a un poema, en lugar de decir in the morning I get up at seven o cualquier cosa así, o sea, ustedes pu pueden leer o encontrarse que ahí dice in the morning I raise from my bed at seven o'clock. O sea, entonces... Sí existe, ¿verdad? Una palabra que representa el get up. Entonces, eh, lo que sí es que en muchas ocasiones no son tan comunes como lo es ya hoy en día el phrasal verb. Ok, bueno. Ahora, eh, creo que para lo de la conversación no vamos a tener chance porque ya falta poco tiempo, solo como, eh, como siete minutos, entonces no nos va a dar suficiente chance. So I think we're going to continue with this. Uh, in this case, we're going to be dealing with electronics. Now, electronics, as you guys already know, they tend to fail. Like many things that we buy are going to break at some point. But here we have some phrases or some words that we can use in order to represent the things that can happen. Now, we have, for example, this is a phrase over. We have two phrasal verbs, go dead and break down. Break down, as I mentioned before. Uh, wait, I think, no, no, I think I didn't mention this one. Break down, oh well, yeah, I did, I did, I did mention break down. So break down is when something is starting to fail. You know, when something is basically just uh, falling apart. Crash, when something stops working. Like out of a sudden, something starts, stops working. Flicker, flicker, Uh, represents something that is starting to fail, mostly with um, things that are basically um, hearable or um, that can be visualized or watchable. Then we have freeze. It is with something freeze. basically in front of you. Like you can see images of this. You can hear sound coming out from it, but it is not going anywhere or not doing what it is supposed to do. It's just there, just like if it just stopped in time. Um, go dead is when something is completely ruined. It cannot be saved. It is done. Jam is when something is outpowered. Like, for example, 
if you have a computer and you want to run a video game that is too powerful for your computer, yeah. it can be jammed. Um, overheat, it happens often. I think with telephones, it happens a lot. If you're doing three to four things on your phone at the same time, it can get to overheat. And a skip happens when uh, things are failing. It is very similar to flicker. A skip it is very similar to flicker. However, when something is skipping, it also means that it is not responding to what you need it to do. So it is, uh, for example, if you in a phone are trying to log into an app, but it logs into a different app, then your phone is starting to skip. So it is a skipping because it is failing, so similar to flickering. Okay, so here we have some of the examples. We have, for example, my computer is driving me crazy. It, and we're going to try to find out which is the best way to uh, describe or finish describing this situation. Now, the bottom, the bottoms on the remote control always stick. They, we're also going to try to find it in a bit. Now, that used CD player often jumps to another song. It, and we're also going to see which one can complete it better. Um, our new flat screen TV has a problem. It, we are also going to see which one fits better. And those old cell phones never work right anymore. They, we are going to finish it in a little bit. Sometimes Ed can't use his solar power calculator. It, we're going to find it in a bit. My computer screen needs to be replaced. It, in another case as well, we're going to try to find it. The answering machine never picks up any calls. It, and we're going to come back to it in just a bit. Okay, so for the first one, my computer is driving me crazy. It, what do you think will be the best way to complete um, this? Break it. Breaking down. Breaking down. Keeps breaking down. Keeps breaking down. Breaking down. Or, or overheat them. Too. Breaking down. Keeps breaking down. En un momento vamos a regresar a ver si alguna nos hace falta que podría funcionar mejor. So it keeps breaking down. All right. So that's what you guys think is the best um, answer. How about the bottoms on uh, the TV remote or the remote control always stick? Breaking. They? Keep jumping. Sorry? Keep jumping. Keep jumping. They keep jumping. Keep jumping. Keep jumping. Keep jumping. Okay. Jamming. Jamming, 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 jamming. Sorry, sorry. Okay, jumping. Jamming. They keep jamming. ¿Y qué significa jamming? Atascando. Atascándose. Atascado. They keep jamming. ¿Ustedes saben en qué otro sentido se puede utilizar esa palabra jam? Jam. 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 Tiene otro otro contexto. Yeah, I remember a name of movie. Okay. Jam. Yes, there is the movie. Space uh, Jam. Space Jam. With, Space Jam. Uh, Bugs yeah. Bunny and all that. Yes. That yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is proper. However, Jam, si, si ustedes se encuentran, bueno, aquellos que son de San Salvador, sí, sabrán esto bastante bien, casi todos los días se encuentran con jams en San Salvador. Mm, jamón. Oh. No, no. Jamón. Jamón. Uh -huh. Ajá. Atasco. Mm, mm, sí. Traffic jam. Cuando el traffic. traffic. Rush hour. Rush, rush, hour. rush hour. Yes, when you guys have the rush hour, there is a lot of jams in traffic. However, yeah. here yeah. in El Salvador, we don't experience jam. Okay, so just, just let me tell you that. You guys have lived in San Salvador, some of you. <laughs> For a long time, Sorry, but, but you yeah. have never experienced a real jam. You should go to California to see what a real jam mm. looks like. Because those are <laughs> jam. okay. But a jam, yeah, a jam is basically when you're stuck when uh, there is like a huge uh, load of traffic and you cannot go anywhere. So that is a jam. Okay, um, Let's see the next one. Is that use CD player often jumps to another song? It keep speak, skipping. Keep skipping. Keep skipping. It keeps skipping. Okay, well, I think the rest of them um, give them here for a first, first, first sentence. 
Thank you very much. Screen. Yes, my computer is driving me crazy. It keeps overheating. That will be the best one. Eso, yo les iba a decir que, o sea, que más adelante íbamos a regresar ¿verdad? a estas. Pero igual, ya eh, se nos acabó el tiempo, básicamente. So, yes, guys, thank you very much for sharing with me today your preference for coffee. I am sorry I disappointed you <laughs> or many of you because I'm not a big, I mean, the best coffee drinker. I do drink coffee, <laughs> but it doesn't work the same as it does in you guys. Uh, once again, thank you for your attention and participation in today's class. I hope I'll see you tomorrow, I think. I'm not sure. I think we're going to work tomorrow. No estoy seguro porque todavía no me han confirmado si mañana vamos a recuperar la clase de ayer. Pero lo más seguro es que sí. Durante el día les estaremos anunciando, ¿verdad? So, if you, if you guys are, are busy, it's understandable. Sí, perdón. Paola said that you have to, to teach us tomorrow. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much then for your attention, people. Um, see you tomorrow then. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.